This is a simplified drawing of the Marcus Penny perpetual motion device. It consists of two U-shaped tubes sitting side by side in a tank of water. One side of each is filled with water and the other side is filled with air. The tank water is colored green. You don't really need the tank of water for the device to work. Also, you only need one U-shaped tube for the device to work. Penny uses two tubes because he uses a direct mechanical connection between the two tubes. When a ball falls on this side of the tube, it powers a mechanical action that lifts this ball up out of the water and over. Then the same mechanical action is repeated for this side. When the ball hits the water, its momentum drives it down below the water and keeps it going. The ball weighs slightly less than water with the same volume, so the buoyancy force is what causes it to come up. If you use stored electrical energy, you only need one U-shaped tube. The falling ball generates electricity that is stored in a battery. Then this stored electricity powers an electrical motor to lift the ball up out of the water. Penny's inspiration for his device was an upside down cup held underwater. He saw how an air pocket was maintained in it. He theorized about dropping a ball inside the cup. Gravity pulled the ball down. As it fell, it generated energy somehow. The ball would have enough momentum to break the surface of the water. The ball would float back to the top. Then the process could be repeated. This is Penny's device in its simplest form. Obviously, using a cup would not make for a practical energy machine. For that, you need to use a much bigger machine. Here we have a tube that is 30 feet long. A ball dropped down it could generate a lot of energy, and the process could be repeated. At least that is the theory. In reality, it would not work. The problem is the air inside the tube can be compressed by water pressure. With a tube 30 feet long, the water pressure would cause the air to be compressed about halfway up the tube. Then the sides of the tube here are underwater and are too long. It would take too much energy to force the ball down this far against the buoyant force. What about a smaller device? Here is one with sides only three feet long. In this case, water pressure is not so great and it stays at the bottom of the tube. However, this will not work either. When you open the top of the tube to let the ball back in, this causes water pressure to rise. If you keep the, the door open long enough, the water pressure will cause the water to rise all the way to the top here. In order to maintain an air pocket like this, you have to keep the top closed. But then there is no way to let the ball back inside the tube. The use of an airlock does not solve the problem. In a tube with three foot walls, the air is compressed, even if only slightly. This means the air has a higher pressure than atmospheric air. The result is it is always being forced out of the airlock. When the ball comes in, the compressed air goes out. This happens when the doors are open.
the water level will gradually rise and will eventually fill the entire tube. The only way to stop the water level rising is to use a mechanical compressor at the airlock. In outer space, you don't want to lose the air in the airlock. On Earth, this does not matter. The real goal is to replace the compressed air lost in the tube, not in the airlock. You can pump air from the lock or from the outside atmosphere into the tube. Either way, this takes too much energy to be practical. Penny in his device uses a U-shaped tube, half filled with air and half filled with water. This side of the tube is open to the atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure will hold back the water here on two conditions. First, the tube is not longer than 32 feet. Second, this side of the tube is closed off to atmospheric pressure. What Penny wants to do is have gravity pull a ball down on this side and have the buoyancy force have the ball float back up on this side and then repeat the process. This process will not work because of the door opening at the top of the water tube. Here are the reasons why. Here we have a chamber that has a vacuum inside. There is a door with a surface area of one square foot. That would mean one ton of air is pressing down on that door from the outside, but with no upward pressure from inside. The result is it would take too much energy to open the door. This is a chamber filled with water. If the water is all the way to the top, it's just like a vacuum chamber. This is because the water pressure in this case goes only downward. It presses down on the sides and the bottom. There is no upward water pressure, none at all. So the result is just like a vacuum chamber. It would take too much energy to open the door. Now, this could happen in real life, but in real life, you would have to then drill a hole, suck out some of the water, and let air get inside. In order to open the door, there has to be an air pocket at the top of the water, even if it is only a very tiny air pocket. In this case, the air pocket is colored red so you can see it. The trouble is even a small air pocket is just like opening the top of the chamber to the atmosphere. The air pocket will force the water downward. In this case, the water cannot go anywhere. However, in Penny's U-shaped tube, the air pocket has enough pressure to force the column of water downward. It can only force it down a small way before it stops. But each time you open the door, more and more air gets in at the top, and more and more will force the water down and up. There's no way to stop this. And again, an airlock will not work. There's no way of stopping the water from rising every time you open this door here. For the reasons explained, this is why Penny's water perpetual motion machine will not work.